OK, so here we have an example of a spatial transcriptomics data set of a mouse embryo in Mobi. And if you want more details about this specific data set, you can look in the description for this video. So this data set is made up of 40 different image tiles. They're all stitched together using a fine transformations, which are applied on the fly in Mobi. So as I move about, you can see these different image tiles here. Now, if I go over here and activate this positions layer, you can then see in these different colors, the different tiles. So let's just focus on one particular position, this brown one, we can zoom in. And then if I turn off the positions, we can look at the different modalities that are here. So this first one, which is what we've been looking at so far, is a membrane marker, which stains the cellular membrane. We also have this cells layer, and these are segmented cells that have been segmented based on uh, those membranes that we were just looking at. And we can select particular cells and look at them like that. Uh, the next layer we have is this genes layer. So these are the individual spots. These are decoded genes from the spatial transcriptomics readout. And by default, they are colored by the first column in this table, which is the spot ID. So these are just arbitrary IDs that identify each spot and they have no biological relevance. So let's change that. Let's instead color by the gene ID. We can go color, color by column. We can find the gene ID column and we can tell it to use this Glasby coloring mode and then click OK. So now each spot is actually colored by the gene ID, which does have biological relevance. But as you can see, there are so many spots here that even as we go and zoom in, it's a bit hard to visually make sense of that. So we can select a specific spot. We can look at the table and we can see by the gene ID, it expresses this pod XL gene. And if we want, we can select every spot that expresses that gene. So we can again, select the gene ID, type in that specific gene name, and then we can click OK. So now every single spot that has that gene ID is shown in that same brown color. So let's do one more gene. We can again go select, select equal to, find the gene ID column, and we can type in a different gene name. So we can use this PLP1, click OK. And now every spot that has that gene ID is shown in purple. So we can visualize the spots well, we can see them in the whole data set, we can color them by their specific gene IDs, but still the point is, is that there are so many spots so many locations, it's hard to actually make sense of that visually. So let's do a bit more analysis. Let's focus on one specific area, this position 23. We can find it in this positions dropdown and then click view. And what this is doing is that rather than showing the images from the whole data set, so every single tile, it's just going to show the data for that one position so that we can focus in on it. And we have that same data. We have this membrane marker that we were seeing before. If I turn on the genes, we have those same spots that we were looking at before with all of the gene IDs and so on. And if I turn that off, we finally have this cell layer, which again is the segmented cells based on the membranes. So still the same data, but instead of having it for the whole data set, we're just focusing on that one region to do some further analysis. So here we've swapped over to a terminal and we're going to do some further analysis with Python. So the idea is we have this little function here, which will compute gene profiles. So it will count the number of gene expressions per cell, and then it will cluster genes. So it will take our cells and cluster them by that expression profile. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so that's running now. And note that this is a simplified example. In practice, you would do more sophisticated, more suitable approaches. But here we just want to demonstrate the principle that you can take your data, do further analysis, and then get your results and put those back into Mobi, which is what we're going to do in just a minute. So that should be nearly done now. Yes, and we can see that it has made this table, this genes per cell dot TSV. So TSV stands for tab separated values, and it's a specific format for tables that Mobi supports. So let's see what's inside of that table. You can see here the names of all of the columns. So the first one is the label ID. That's a very important column. It's the ID of each of the segmented cells. And we need that to be able to match to the segmented objects that are inside of Mobi. Then we have all the different gene names. And at the end, we have what we're really interested in, which is the gene clustering that we just computed. So note here that here we're using Python, but you can use whichever tool you want to do your data analysis, as long as you can export to the TSV file format. And you can also add the appropriate column. So here it's the label ID, because we're looking at the cell segmentation. 
But for example, if you want to look at the spots, you'd have to make something with the spot ID column and so on. So as long as you have those two things, TSV and the appropriate first column, you can then load that result back into Mobi and visualize it. So let's go ahead and do that with this table. So when we get back to Mobi, we can do table, load columns, load from the file system, and we can go and find that table that we just made with Python. So here it is, we click on it, we click open, and it will add all of those columns that we just made to the end of this table. So you can see them there on the right hand side of that table. So now we can go and we can color, color by column. We can find our new gene clustering, tell it to use the Glasby color scheme, click OK. And now we have our cells, but colored by our gene clusters. So each cluster has a different color and we can see that in its spatial context, browse around, do everything we would normally do with Moby here. So just to give another example, if you want to go from the other direction, say there is some, there's some data in Moby that you want to be able to get out and then do your own analysis with, that is also possible. So for example, here we're looking at the spots with the gene expression and say you're interested in this intensity column. What you can do is you can color by that column as we've been doing before. So you can go color, color by column. You can tell it to use blue, white, red. So blue would be low values, red high values, and you can go and find that intensity column. So now every single spot is colored by its intensity and you can go and you can browse it. But say you want to do some more analysis, let's get that data out of Moby. So you can save columns as, we can select the columns you want, click OK. And then we just have to choose somewhere we want to save it on the file system. And we give it a name, ending with TSV, because this is going to be a tab separated values file as before. And we save it and that will produce that table and put it on your file system. So here it is. And with that, you can do whatever analysis you want with whatever program you want. So the point here is that you can go in either direction. You can take your data, you can do further analysis, get your table, bring that back into Moby, or you can take the tables in Moby and save them onto your file system and then do whatever analysis you want. So the point is that it's quite flexible in terms of what you want to do with your analysis.